Hi, welcome to Reading with Nana, and hello to my returning friends. On this segment, I'm going to read some poems. Some of them are poems about feelings. Some of them are poems about things that we experience and sometimes complain about. This first poem is called Wandering. Wandering. It's by Ezra Smathers, and this was written in 1843. So we're talking about, well, more than 200 years ago, okay? And they're traveling in a covered wagon and by horseback. All I asked was, Pa, you reckon that we're halfway there? Pa snarled back at me like a wild she-bear. You ask that question 10 times a day. I don't. No, I don't. But I didn't dare say. When we left Independence four months ago, I didn't know that time could ever run so slow. At first, it was fun riding up here all day, seeing new places along the way. Deserts and prairies, a wild river flood, with our wheels cutting ruts through the dust and the mud. Seeing strange critters I've never seen before, moose and rattlers, Buffalo by the score. Past Laramie, South Pass, then Fort Hall. Through woods so full of giant trees, no sky poked through at all. When we stop for the night, it's fetch water, find wood, rock the baby, stir the pot, listen up, be good. And always, always, always is don't stray away and never, never, never is it run off and play. Ma says in Vancouver, they'll be playing time to spare. I just wonder what Pa reckons. Are we halfway there? Sounds familiar. And we're only riding, what, maybe one or two hours in a car with gas and tires. And they can go like 60, 70 miles an hour and even more. The next poem is entitled, Time for Bed. We all like that, by Amanda Miller. I'm not a child, I told my mom when she said to go to bed. I can stay up just as late as you. I don't need to rest my head. Mom smiled at me, and then she said, well, climb back on the couch. Try to keep your eyes wide open and make sure that you don't slouch. I did okay the first half hour. I didn't blink an eye, though it was hard to hide my sleepiness. I really sure did try, but in the final minutes of my very favorite show, mom said I started snoring, but I was asleep, so I don't know. The next poem kind of talks about school stress, something I think we've always felt, spelling tests. I had a spelling test today. I hope that I did well, but some of the words on my spelling test were very hard to spell. I'll give you some examples to show you what I mean. Spaghetti, spare, and sparkle, skeleton, and machine. Here are more examples. These words are difficult too. Skiing and skyscraper, statue, stitch, and stew. Am I a very good speller? Today, I'm not so sure. I'll let you know tomorrow when I get my spelling score. That's funny. But I believe some of us have been there. This poem is entitled, I Don't Want To, and it's by Jack Perlusky. I don't want to play on the sidewalk. I don't want to sit on the stoop. I don't want to lick any ice cream. I don't want to slurp any soup. I don't want to listen to music. I don't want to look at cartoons. I don't want to read any stories. I don't want to blow up balloons. I don't want to dig in the garden. I don't want to roll on the rug. I don't want to wrestle the puppy. I don't want to give you a hug. I don't want to shoot baskets. I don't want to bang on my drum. I don't want to line up my soldiers. I don't want to whistle or hum. I don't want to program my robot. 
I don't want to strum my guitar. I don't want to use my computer. I don't want to wind up my car. I don't want to color with crayons. I don't want to model with clay. I don't want to stop my not wanting. I'm having that kind of a day. Anybody, adult or a child, can have that kind of a day. The next poem is entitled Mr. Nobody. And as I read it, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Oddly enough, the author is anonymous. So, Mr. Nobody? I know a funny little man, as quiet as a mouse, who does the mischief that is done in everybody's house. There's no one ever sees his face, and yet we all agree that every plate we break was cracked by Mr. Nobody. Tis he who always tears our books and who leaves the door ajar. He pulls the buttons off our shirts and scatters pins afar. The squeaking door will always squeak, for prithee, don't you see? We leave the oiling to be done by Mr. Nobody. The finger marks upon the door by none of us are made. We never leave the blinds unclosed to let the curtains fade. The ink we never spill, the boots that lying round you see, are not our boots. They all belong to Mr. Nobody. And we have one last poem entitled Sick. The author is Shel Silverstein. I cannot go to school today, said little Peggy Ann McKay. I have the measles and the mumps, a gash, a rash, and purple bumps. My mouth is wet. My throat is dry. I'm going blind in my right eye. My tonsils are as big as rocks. I counted 16 chicken pox. And there's one more. That's 17. And don't you think my face looks green? My leg is cut. My eyes are blue. It might be instamatic flu. I cough and sneeze and gasp and choke. I'm sure that my left leg is broke. My hip hurts when I move my chin. My belly button's caving in. My back is wrenched. My ankle's sprained. My appendix pains each time it rains. My nose is cold. My toes are numb. I have a sliver in my thumb. My neck is stiff. My voice is weak. I hardly whisper when I speak. My tongue is filling up my mouth. I think my hair has fallen out. My elbow's bent. My spine ain't straight. My temperature is 108. My brain is shrunk. I cannot hear. There is a hole inside my ear. I have a hangnail and my heart is, what? What's that? What's that you say? You say today is Saturday? Goodbye, I'm going out to play. I hope you enjoyed the poems that I read today. Click like or subscribe. Until next time.